We made it. Hi, guys. Yay, we made it. A uh, few little difficulties. But we're some, here. Some gremlins. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely shouldn't have tried re did that rewire. I told you that avocado is not a conductor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it look, look is... The background. She wants to tell me something, too. Oops, I'm not going to say her name. Really. She's, got, she's got a message for me. Is it me. because I said avocado? I don't know. Anyway, welcome to the show, folks. Welcome. Episode 22 of Low Expectations, where, as always, beer is great. We are terrible. As we is just evidenced out. by our late start yes, tonight. Little late, it's, little late. It's, so, without any further ado, okay. let's go to the first beer. I'm what? Thir I'm thirsty. Let's go to the first beer. Right. So, first beer is the pregame beer. And the pregame beer... Shouldn't we have drank that before we started? If it's a pregame beer? No, no, that's the pre-show beer. Uh, okay, I'm confused. Pre-show pre is different than pregame. Right. So, pregame beer. B loves the pregame beer. Huge fan. I love the pregame beer. Also a huge fan. However, we do not agree on pregame beers. Two paths diverge. So, we're going to open up B's pregame beer. So, we're going to head over to the poor cam. And tonight's pregame beer from B is Imprint Wallpaper. It is a lovely dry hopped Pilsner. Now, we have had this one before. Let's see how it opens. Imprint Brewing out of lovely Hatfield, Pennsylvania. 5.6% ABV Pilsner. 3.99 rating on, on Untapped. You almost stepped on my opening sound, sir. Check out the glass tonight. I got my Daft Punk glasses in. Love me, Daft Punk. All right, so what did you say this Pilsner was? What ABV? 5.6. I'm drinking out of the... 5.6%. Uh, Foggy or window. All right, he's just trying to he's trying to stoke me. He's trying to poke the bear. I, I know what he's doing. And let me explain. Not that I need to explain because I'm right. Um, no, you weren't <laughs> right yesterday. No, in fact. the entire restaurant completely disagreed. I am in the vast minority uh -huh. here, which is shocking. You were shocked. I was completely shocked. You're usually so, angry. And you're usually angry. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, pre-game. In my head, the pre-game. You have something happening later that night. That is the focus of the night. The pre-game beer serves to... You know, we didn't do any of our opening tonight, by the way. We didn't mention anything. Just we'll get to it. We'll, we'll, we'll sprinkle it. <sighs> like fairies. Can I take a sip of this real quick? Yeah, go ahead. So... Uh, don't forget that you can go to YouTube and watch us if you're not there right now. What's the you name of the channel? Watch us on... I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> we are... If you go to YouTube and search for Low Expectations Beer, that's where you will find us. Low Expectations Beer, and you will find us. You can also search Low Expectations Beer on Spotify and several other, even Apple, uh, on several other platforms where you will find... Uh, our growing library of past podcasts. So if you'd rather listen than watch this. Which, why? But smart. We got you covered. Yeah, we got you covered on that. And uh, we'll get into the other stuff later. But we're on Facebook at groups slash aim lowest. And it's also in the notes in YouTube. So once you get to YouTube, you'll have everything you need. However you like to devour your social media, we've got you covered. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we may have some new people in tonight. Yeah, we got new people, but let's... Well, I just want to introduce myself. I'm B. This is Tom. Oh, yeah. My name is right there. His, his name's on there. Pre-gaming beers. Here's my philosophy on pre game beers. Back to my original topic. So wrong. But continue. You have a focus of the night. When I approached the idea of this episode, I kind of thought... I, I approach it from the fact that I used to have a lot of bottle shares in my house, and people were coming over, and I'm not very patient, mm, yeah. and I also like to kind of get the groove going, so when you walk in the door, I am the host with the most, ready to go, so I like a nice, light, grease the wheels and get everything going kind of beer. It's not going to 
not going to make me woozy, not high ABV, not going to blow my palate out. It just sets me up for the rest of the night. Now, after listening to last night's discussion, I can understand your point of view. I'm not saying you're wrong. In fact, the case that I was presented last night made a lot of sense. In fact, it was discussed again today at work, and I was in the minority again today at work, <laughs> and other people brought up more very important points that I totally agree with. So, Rags, that is that is one... That is... Uh, Rags asked if pre-gaming was tailgate, tailgating, and if they were one and the same, or if they were different. Uh, that pre-game is what most people refer to as would be the tailgating. Now, tailgating is different. If you're running into a concert and you're going to tailgate for an hour and run in, that's so very different than running the Buffett Marathon. You know, if you're going to do a Buffett tailgate, you're there at 6 a.m. Or at least. If you're not there by 6 a.m., you're not doing it right. So, so I, that one you've got to build up to. There, but, are, there are qualifying factors. Yeah, your typical tailgate, I would say, is a pregame. You want to get there, and even any pregame that I feel like, oh, say it's a beautiful Friday night, and your friends have had a, a few beers, or you're about to meet with your friends, or whatever it might be, you've got to get ready here. So there's no messing around. You go right for the triple IPA. Boom. You need to fast a triple IPA. Just drink it down. You're not going to sip it. You're going to... Maybe spend three, four minutes on that thing. Get that triple in you, and then, then you're on. Then you, you're right at that level, and then you maintain. Just, just ride it the whole time, and that's the way the majority of the people be interviewed feel. That's also the way. Here's I why I agree with that. Triple or double? Some people said double, but if you're going into a concert, you already purchased and bought the pregame beer. What you bought, then I can see. A double, maybe even a triple, to start the peak and then let you level out through the rest of the night. Because mm -hmm. buying a beer at a concert sucks. They are so expensive and it's usually meh. So you want to prime the pump correctly. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. Yep. But, um, yeah, uh, somebody brought that up at work today about uh, having to pay. Somebody also brought up the fact that if you're at a show or something like that, you want to peak quick. So that by the time you have to go home later, you're yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So you yeah. want to start early and then end good. Yeah. So that's that's why you would hit like a double or triple. That's your pregame. That's my pregame. My chosen pregame for tonight uh, never arrived. Thank you, UPS, for lying. You did not attempt a delivery. My camera didn't go off. You're not there. You never walked up to my front door. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe. Jerk. But... Equilibrium, straight out of the laboratory, is an amazing triple. Was supposed to be here, never showed up. So we're drinking, which is good. I'm not complaining. This is a delicious beer. I love it. It is just not my idea of a pregame. This is this is a all day, every day, easing into things. And that's how I like the pregame. I like to... And it is delicious. I like to just... I'll tell you what. Tell me how you feel the smell compared to the flavor of that beer. The body, it is silky smooth. The flavor is incredibly good. But that smell does not do it for me. I don't really get that much of a nose on this at all. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like it. What I do get, I don't like. But I don't, that, the body in this, for a Pilsner, this is incredible. This is a really, really great Pils. This is one of my favorite beers from them. Really, really wonderful. I got all a in. lot of it, and I drink a lot of it. It, it. is fantastic. Oh, apparently... Jay Rugger's with you. He's drinking a delicious triple from EQ right now. There you go. Electromagnetic waves. Nice. Well, Erica goes big early, too. Right? All right, well, you know what? I am in the vast minority here. I'm going to take this wonderful empty can. I'm going to put it right back here with our low expectations glasses. Which we're not drinking out of tonight because I got a new glass. Uh, by the way, if you want a glass, just message us. We don't have many more. Uh, what we do have... I think we're, we're down to like 15, 20, something yeah, like that. Something like that. What we do have, we're going to bring on May 22nd. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yes. what's, what's, his, what's, his, what's um, his twist on this? What's so, going on? Uh, May 22nd in Lansdale, 
uh, we really can't even just say round guys anymore. We learned a lot. Yeah, so a whole uh, lot. for you kids at home, we had a planning session last night. We went to round guys, and we sat down, and Tom and I really thought that we were just going to kind of throw a little block party. We got this cool little space tucked around the corner, and like maybe 25 of our buds were going to show up. We're going to hang out. We're going to drink some beers under the tents in the sunny skies. Might be a bring-your-own-chair kind of deal. We don't know. And then we sat down, and I had this whole list of things, and before we started, I was like, uh, we were talking to Ryan from Round Guys, who's a great dude, and um, I was like, hey, buddy, listen, I'm just going to throw a bunch of stuff at you, and just feel free to say no, because these are just ideas. And I was like, how about this? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I was like, how about this? He's like, sure, let me ask. Like, how about this? He's like, yeah. And then I was, he's like, I do want to tell you something. And we're like, what? And he's like, well... And we don't have all the details ironed out yet, so we're not going to go into exhaustive detail. But, like, Tom and I went in thinking, like, it was going to be a nice Saturday afternoon like this. Mm-hmm. And Ryan's like, um, it kind of has turned into this. They are blow the town. We're, we're not only going to disappoint round guys. Yeah. We're going to disappoint an entire city. Yeah. An entire all square the, block All of Lansdale is going to be Lansdale. super disappointed be in what we, what we do. Um, it's... It's going to. We, we do know that there's there is a wonderful cause tied to it, and we will get into the wonderful cause as as they start to release the details. So there's going to be overall throughout the city of Lansdale there will be there will be this wonderful cause, and it will start in the morning. It will continue to go through the day, through from from place to place, within all within walking distance, from place to place within the area of Round Guys, and it will go on. We're planning to go until six o'clock, or you know that would be our cleanup time. But you've got the, you know the world is your oyster there in Lansdale. You're going to have all these other places. Uh, there's going to be live music in different places. There will be other block parties in different places, all within walking distance. Yeah, it's like multiple entities are having multiple events, yeah. and they all got together and said instead of doing all this stuff that's kind of like different, let's. Uh ebony and ivory this and put it yeah. all together and they united for this one great cause so yeah. it's 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 gonna be incredibly awesome and the cause is something that i think that we can both we we can both really get behind mm-hmm. and it is it is almost one of the reasons why we started this show right uh for our own definitely yeah. born out of the show's yes. born out of that arena so when it when it all comes together i think it's gonna be fantastic we're super overly excited there's everything that we said how about this idea was like yeah let's do it and let's make it bigger so this is a million times bigger than we ever thought it would be we're we're very very excited if you miss this you're you're gonna be really sad yeah you definitely want to clear your day and come out and we're not being purposely vague it's just we haven't hammered out all the details yet and we when we do give you guys details we want to make sure they're locked down and you're definitely not going to be just at round guys you know wear your walking sneakers because you're going to be you're going to be moving around yeah. bring a chair so you can sit and rest with us it would be great to hang out but there's going to be a lot yeah you on. can definitely use our space as a landing spot yep. and a home base but you can also do some floating if you want to yeah all right so yeah we're excited we hit that pretty good let's go to beer number two beer number two so beer number two is my beer it's my pick and my pick for the night is the lawnmower beer but I have an issue with that because I don't have a lawnmower that I can ride on. So I, I'm not going to push mow my 10 seconds of front yard and then Shock carry, a, be- carry a, beer? a beer with me. It just <laughs> lo- Lawnmower beers don't work for me. Uh, if I were to do anything, it would probably be like a lawnmower rum and coke. But, and I have... Sons that I have passed the lawn mowing torch mm. on to, so I have not mowed a lawn in years. So I thought hard, and but, I was like, "Well, you know what? I've got one. I have a beer that's going to be able to cut through all that pollen, that heavy grass smell, all that stuff that's going to mess up did, my head and you, get my eyes." Did into. you ever have a riding mower that you were cutting grass on in your life? My parents. Did you ever happen to like? House. This is the worst when you're on the mower and you're cruising around and you hit like a dry spot in the yard. And it kicks up all that dust and dirt in your face. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. That's when you need the lawnmower yeah, that beer. Sucks. Yeah. So yeah. I think mm-hmm. your choice is perfect to uh, wash that feeling away. So my lawnmower beer choice is a beer that I've had. I've been I've had it in the fridge for a couple weeks, waiting to use it on the show. And then I thought about, it. I was like, this is the perfect time. So we're going with Fatheads 
Hop Juju. It is a classic beer. Absolutely love this. Used to be in bottles only, but now it is in cans. So there you go. Fathead's Hop Juju. Looks a little different in the bottles. Let's hear how she opens. <sighs> a little bit on the dust. Here we go. Well, that sounded nice. All right. Crap pop. And let's see if she pours just like I remember. Oh, look at that golden color. Very, very nice. 9% Imperial IPA. I believe they're out of Cleveland. Yes, and they also have a place in Pittsburgh. So I Hop Juju has a special place in my heart. Uh, it is one of the f the beers that over the years has actually stayed consistent to me. There are beers that the f I feel the flavor changes. Everyone says they don't change. Nugget Nectar, the flavor never changed. Yeah, it did. I don't like it anymore. Mm. Hop Juju has always been very consistent. Now, that's probably going to change because I said that out loud. But let's give it a shot. Cheers. Oh, good choice. I already sniffed and drank. I would... You would call this West Coasty, right? No, no. I would not. I would call this old school East Coasty in the vein of the early years of Dogfish Head. Roger. Okay. Very good. I like that better. Because... I know where you went with West Coasty because of the bitter punch, mm -hmm. but that's how the OG East Coast IPAs yeah. used to be. Yeah, very good, very good. I like it. I agree. That's that's a great description. OG East Coast. I mean, the clarity on that thing. Look at that. It's but incredible. Also, it would have been great for one of our special glasses. Look at um, the color. It's got a darker hue to mm, it. Beautiful amber color. Just lovely. Which is n what we're not used to. And it is a heavier flavor. It is a very heavy flavor, in my opinion. It's, I think, it's right on the border of boozy. It's not quite boozy, but it's poking at it. Yeah. But that floral finish, it's go, it goes boozy, or pokey boozy, then it goes bitter, and then there's a kiss of that floral at the end. If you've never had Hop Juju, you can get it pretty much at any... any Fair distributor. Do you remember? When, it's fantastic. Do you remember when Hopheads was, um, or Fatheads was all the rage? It was like you couldn't get that. It was like the d the day that came out, you had to go fight for it. If you were lucky, if it was on the shelf after a week, and now it's just sitting there waiting, like many other beers. Yeah, it's funny how uh, this 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 beer world that we live in is very trendy. It's good. Mm. I don't know that. Like, I feel like you, you would mess your lines up on the lawn if you were, had, oh, were dude, packing if you, these. Oh, dude, <laughs> if you had a couple of these on a lawnmower, yeah, you're going to... Your neighbor's going to be ticked <laughs> off. You're going you're gonna to be writing your name in, in the... Pearl, hot <laughs> dolls! Grass. Tom's cutting yeah. the grass again! <laughs> yeah, you can't... Um, I, I was thinking of this as more of like the, I just, because I have a push mower, I just finished mowing. And it's time to crack a cold. Because some people rock the, the cup holder on the tractor. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which I, I, I totally get. I understand that. I just haven't lived it. I, 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 I don't think I would mind that at all. I think I would like that. But I don't have one, so I can't yeah, I can't speak to we it. We can appreciate it from afar. So if you've got a tractor, get yourself a cup holder. Maybe a little cooler. Like one of those little six-pack coolers right, right in between while you're driving the tractor. Okay. Never have to get off. That would be cool. Mount it right on there. Yeah. <laughs> Be a good pearl, time. get my hot glue gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that'll be perfect. If you have a pearl. I don't know why I went pearl tonight. Yeah, you went pearl <laughs> twice already. All right, so did we forget anything besides? <clears throat> we did. We totally blew through the opening. Um, no, we got it all. I, I guess so. Um, no. Uh, do you want to show the kids our new toy that we just got in? That sticks to stuff? Yeah, but you can't show them that one. It's stuck. We can show them that one. How are you going to get that off of there? We don't. Just bring it oh. back up. Hmm? All right. We got new stickers. You're going to have to, like... Squint. Grab a screenshot. <laughs> blow your uh, view up to, like, 300% on your browser. Yeah, we got some special stickers. They're really funny. Yeah. I think they are. Yeah, he loves them. I do. But, you know. You know me. Mm -hmm. Very... Very mature sense of humor. Um, no, that's it. That's all we have to talk about. And we said... Uh, all right, so no. Can I diverge? Can I go off script for a second? 
because one of the categories we didn't promote tonight is, is something that I do quite often. I cook most of the meals in my house. And when I'm cooking, I really enjoy having a cooking dinner. dinner. Mm, okay. I know you cook a lot. Do you also partake in a cooking dinner beer? Or it doesn't... Mm, not often. No? And one thing I hate, I hate to have a beer with dinner. Hate it. I'd rather just have a, a nice glass of water and focus more on, on the food. Hate's a really strong reaction. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to drink beer with dinner at all, ever. I watched you drink beer and eat dinner last night. Did you actually watch that? You didn't drink any beer while nope. you ate? I do not. No, sir. You had a beer. Yeah. And you had dinner. And the beer sat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't like to mix the two. It's, I'm sure it's. I'm, that is not the popular opinion. I'm certain of it. But I. I prefer to just go with water. Okay. I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh... I do. I. I do like to. Uh... Especially when I usually every Tuesday I fire up the Blackstone and we do Taco Tuesdays and I like to have a beer while I'm working the Blackstone. And I definitely like that wallpaper Ooh, we just had. So while you're cooking, I would say yes, especially if you're at the grill. That's what I mean by the dinner beer. Well, the, the dinner beer. The preparing Oh, beer. preparing dinner beer? 100% I'm with you. Uh, I would say I only do that maybe once a week. Oh, yeah. At the most. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not It's not a, a frequent thing. No, but. me neither. And usually more towards the weekends or Tuesdays. Cause it's yeah, and I don't Tuesday. want a beer while I'm making spaghetti. Uh, no, no, no. It's no, got to no, be, no, it has no, to be no. the right situation. No, okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair point. But I can't believe you don't like beers with tacos. Like, oh my oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh, no. yeah. Mm-mm. Nope. Like that Pilsner we just had? Water. Glorious. It yeah. goes pat- oh. first fat as with that. It doesn't, nothing. No, no beer goes good with food. That's bizarre. No. Oh, soft pretzels, maybe. Soft pretzels, I could do it. But. <laughs> I feel like he's got this but encyclopedia like, of rules Well, I'm somewhere. thinking. I'm just thinking. <laughs> and it's just me. Yeah. Right. Depends on the meal. Totally depends on the meal. I don't... Yeah, no, I'm not drinking... I agree. I'm not drinking a beer with spaghetti. Also, <sighs> like, if you slice me a piece of cake, I don't want a beer. No. <sighs> but... Well, it depends. I could drink a nice stout with a cake. He's so complicated. You can have a stout he's with so a cake. He's so complicated. You could totally have a stout with cake. A nice, like, chocolate, rich chocolate cake and a delicious stout. Maybe a dry, a nice dry Irish stout to go with it. But not a lager? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I got goosebumps. <laughs> no. no. That's that just terrible. in the mix, light and Sam tickling you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so... I took a picture of his wires today while while we were struggling with uh, internet connection. I think that's against the law. No, I took a couple <laughs> pictures. I'm gonna put a picture of what what in the mix does for us. Speaking of spaghetti, <laughs> so you can't. Yeah, oh my god! Yeah, you've got to see it. So I I have a picture of. I'm gonna put a picture up later of what of what he has to set up. Crabs and beer. No, because you dip your crab in butter. You don't do butter and beer. That's a terrible mix. I'm out. Oh, I'm sorry. Rags, don't even try. He's a baby. I am. I'm... Yes. Oh, yes, Zach. I agree 1,000%. Beach beer is absolutely a thing. I'm not a huge beach guy, but when I'm down there, I absolutely need beverages. The only thing I want, the only liquid I need at the beach is SPF 100 for the hour that I'm there, and then I get out. Because I hate the beach. And I know everyone at home is shocked that he oh, hates the beach. Because he loves everything, this guy. I used to love the beach. When I, when I lived in North Carolina, I loved it. It was great. But then when, when my time was up there, uh, I had had enough of the beach. You and the beach broke up? Yeah, I, I had enough of it. I woke up enough times on the beach with my face in sand. Like, it was just sand in my bed every night. It was... Our house was right on the beach. It was fantastic. It doesn't sound like it's the beach's fault. It sounds like it's Tom's fault. It's Sand's fault. (laughs) Sand is the problem. Well, maybe if you weren't (laughs) drinking hop jujus as your (laughs) pre-games, things would have gone a little better. No, those were back in the days of, like, the cheapest beer you could possibly get. In the mix, what are you drinking tonight? Hey, Hey, neighbor! 
Tom, you want to tell the folks at home what that was? That is a delicious Narragansett lager brewed fresh in Rhode Island. It's a wonderful beer. It is a million times better than, say, like a Yingling lager. Bum, bum, bum. Get yourself a Narragansett lager. Dirt cheap and really delicious. <laughs> I, I would disagree with the dirt cheap. <laughs> Did you ever get messages back about that? Nope. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think you should share that story. Don't you don't. Know. You don't need to share the name of the. Don't share where you got it because it was not. I, I, it was a mistake. Right. But you should. You should share the story and see what people say. Uh, we'll what, bring, we'll, we'll, see what action should have taken. Should have been Okay. Taken. We'll play up. What would you do? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll bring that in in the next segment. Okay. okay. We'll have time for that. Yep. Um, um, but yeah, Zach said all those. There's kayaking beer. There's fishing beer. There's there's a million beers. There's there's I just got to the boat beer. There's the I'm about to leave the boat beer. There's the I'm on the boat all day beer. There's just there's so many beers like. That. Are you saying there's a beer for all reasons? There's a beer for all reasons, um, except for dinner. I have a question. Kayaking beer. That can only be with the open kayak. You can't do it in the enclosed kayak. Where would you put it? Unless so, you had like a cup holder mounted to your chest. No. Um. A when helmet? I beer helmet. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. When I go... Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> no! When I go in closed, like, whitewater <laughs> river raft kayaking, I like to wear my beer helmet, not only for the protection, but then I also have two beers directly into my mouth. The beer helmet. Mm -hmm. I thought we promised you wouldn't go beer helmet mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, mine's bright orange for safety. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a flashing light on top. <laughs> then we get wet. <laughs> it's waterproof. <laughs> Yeah, definitely the beer helmet. Okay, beer helmet's the way to go. Uh, Zach's fishing kayak has two cup holders. That's pretty damn awesome. That's got to be a sit on top. Yeah, it's got to be a sit on top. Yeah, sit on tops are, are great for stuff like that. So, have you ever cooked with beer? Oh, yes. Give me an example. Okay, I love to cook with beer. My family does not like it when I cook with How beer. How do they know? Because they taste it instantly. They what? Know. So... Re honestly, the only things that I make with beer now yes. are things that they're not going to eat. So That's my so my chili, when I make chili, always has a stout. significant... Ooh, no. Diff depends on the chili. Go ahead. Let's hear some more rules. It's just a recipe. Go it's ahead. Not a, it's not a rule. Listen, go ahead. So if you're making, like, my award-winning, chili cook-off winning pumpkin chili, you use pumpkin beers. That was a family contest. It doesn't count. It was not a family <laughs> contest. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, if you're, you know, there's different. If, if you want certain different flavors, you use, you use different beers. If you're going with like like a, a lighter chili, then I would say go with something like a like a lager. What else do you put beer in? Bread. Yes. Definitely in bread. Yes. Beer is fantastic in bread. Um, hot dogs. Corned beef. Oh, yes, absolutely, yeah. See, now you, I wasn't expecting the, the beer recipe quiz. Yeah, corned beef, without a doubt. It's not a quiz, I'm just curious. You gotta, I, I like to do, with corned beef, I like to do a, a, like a dry stout and a lager. Almost like a black and tan in there. Nice. I think it's a nice mix. Have you ever made beer can chicken? Oh, hell is yes. Best beer for beer can chicken? Bud Light Lime. Delicious lime flavor. It's fantastic. And you're throwing away a not great beer. Yeah, because the beer doesn't impart a ton of flavor. It's mostly the what? steaming part. But with that Bud Light lime, it does a good job. You'd be surprised. And I throw, I stuff the can with butter and herbs. So all that makes a little soup and steams out into the chicken. Butter, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll try that. Yeah, I'd love to do beer can chicken. Yeah, I love beer can They're chicken. Really and it's just fun to shove the can right up there and plop them on the grill. And he's like... I think it's fun. Because everybody, everybody... Amateur proctologist? Everybody walks in and like, what are you doing? And I'm like, making a friend. <laughs> I'm going to make you a shirt. It says, amateur proctologist. <laughs> I think I need a name, though. A name? We'll work on it. Dr. Bum? Handy Charlton. <laughs> <laughs> Fat fingers love. <laughs> no, I... All my patients keep canceling. <laughs> uh, I accept every insurance. All right. So, um, all right. I just wanted to throw a couple more scenarios at you. Is it time for my favorite beer? 
Dr. Bendover. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Atchison. That's it. Right there. there he is. <laughs> there he is. Uh, is it time for my favorite beer? Is it time for your favorite beer? What's your favorite beer? My favorite beer of the night is the next idea is the idea of this next beer. This this is one that I hold close to my heart. I'm just gonna sit back I, and I'm gonna let you ride. Go. You really? Yep, go for it. Alright. So last beer of the night is the shower beer. And I will tell you, there is nothing better than a properly executed shower beer. I love the shower beer. I love it in so many different ways. The shower beer has been Keep it clean. Something I discovered or I was taught about the shower beer when I was 21 years old, just learning about beers. And every day I was working super hard, really long, hot days. And when you got home, that shower and that shower beer was just incredible. But it was even better. The shower beer is even better. Why is it so funny? That's the comments, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I was reading the comments. Um, A shower beer in an outdoor shower. There is nothing like the trees above you or the sky above you, just open air, outdoor shower. The outdoor shower shower is something special, I agree. Oh, man. So this weekend, Saturday, in the morning, I'll be turning on my outdoor water, and I will have my outdoor shower running at the lake. So by Saturday night, I will be having my first shower beer because I have a huge day of work planned, like hard, tiring work. What's the temp going to be like? I don't know. If it's above 40, I'm good. It's awesome. I'll be all right. Okay. Shower beer. Shower beer. Now, we were talking about this earlier, and I brought up... Go ahead. Intro the beer, and then I'll jump in. Oh, you want me to intro it? Yep, go for it. So I will slightly intro this, and then uh, B's going to jump in on it. This is by Interborough, which is in Brooklyn. It is called Lifted. It is a 6% something beer. What is it, 6%? 6% what? IPA. IPA. It is in a crowler. It was on tap at a local beer place. And, uh, well, why don't you tell the story of it? I'm going to crack it, and then you tell the story. Here okay, so uh, first... I'm not sure. This may be my first beer from Interboro. No, you've you've had other. I've had Interboro before. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. If I showed you the can art, it's a distinctive can art. You would recognize it. Okay. So I was Very nice, hazy at pour. a at the distributor today actually because I was floundering because I had my in my head I like something nice and light and refreshing in the shower. So I wanted to go for something nice, light, and refreshing. I was walking around the distributor looking for, I don't know, a lager, a saison, something bright, something snappy. Nothing was really floating in my boat. I went into the special back room. Didn't see anything there. I went Like at the movie store? We've talked about that room before. <laughs> <laughs> I went into the cooler. And because we're living in like a double IPA world now. Yeah. That's yeah. like that's like the norm. Mm-hmm. You're right. So then I went over to the Crowler list, and I was staring at it. I was looking at it, and I saw this beer listed on there, and I was like, oh, that looks pretty good. I haven't had Interboro. I checked it on Untapped because I'm a nerd like that, and it, it got a decent rating on Untapped for just a regular old IPA. And the dude behind the counter is looking at me. He goes, do you want something, man? I'm like, I think so. I love. They ask me all the time. I just, I just stand there and just look at things. <laughs> Do you want anything? I'm pretty sure you do. I do. That's I just why I'm don't here, <laughs> but I just don't know. So, what really caught my eye about this beer in this 32 ounce vessel? 32 ounces of beer. Was that it, um, it was four dollars and twenty cents. Four dollars and twenty cents. So, I, I don't know. My brain autom- my it's, when I saw that my brain auto- automatically went to, what's the matter with that beer? Why, why is, is it, it on clearance? Right. So when he asked me, do you want something, man? I looked at him, and in my biggest attempt to not sound douchey, I said, how old is that beer? And he looked at me like, that's a weird question. And I was like, because it's four bucks? And he said, oh, well, we put that on for the holiday. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. Easter beer? I don't understand. And he's like, 
420. I was like, oh. <laughs> so they ran this special, this beer, $4.20 for a crowler. Today it was available. So if you're, you know, in the area, you know, you might want to run over there. Um, so have you tasted it yet? I have not. I was, I, I really enjoyed the story earlier. So I was just listening to it again. I thought, I think it's a good story. David Archer, outdoor showers are the best. Mm, hey, now. Um, I love that I built an outdoor shower at my house. It's the only thing I use. In the dead of winter, like Thanksgiving time, I'll wrap it with plastic and just use it out there still, like in the freezing cold. As long until the until the water lines freeze. It's a little weird. No, it's like a sauna. When it's all wrapped in plastic, it's crazy. It's like a sauna. It's awesome. Okay. It's incredible. Uh, I also enjoy the outdoor shower. My outdoor shower experiences are strictly beach related. Um, for four dollars and twenty cents for this crawler, Thomas, fantastic. Wow. Fantastic. Great wow. mouthfeel. Nice flavor. It's light. I don't get a lot on. The, well, it's only six percent. Really good flavor, but 6%. there's a lightness to it. Yeah, it's six percent. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. And there's a whole lifted series that runs the gamut of all the IPA styles. Mm -hmm. So this must be like the base. But um, yeah, what a bargain. So. Then I went to a different distributor because you gave me a mission today. And I'm not going to mention the distributor I went to to accomplish this mission. But earlier today, in the mix, showed us what he was sipping on. Uh, what was that beer again? Narragansett Lager. So, <sighs> at this distributor... We, we always keep a supply of Narragansett here in the studio. Or in the mix won't even show up. In the mix gets very cranky. <laughs> Howdy neighbor isn't available. Right? Hi neighbor. Hi neighbor. I like howdy, but okay. Hi neighbor. Hi neighbor. If hi neighbor's not here, it's a problem. It's what they drink in Jaws the whole time. Think, Delicious beer. I think you're going to need a bigger hammer. All right, so um, I went in because Tom said, I'm on, I got one left. You, you got to make in the mix happy. And I was like, all right, I got it. I went in. Now, I had some preconceived notions about this beer, I must admit. You've never had it. You don't know what to expect. I've never had it. I hear the word lager. I feel like it's ready, readily available. And in my head, I pictured 12-ounce cans wrapped in cardboard in 12 or 24 or 30 varieties. Yep. That's what I had in my head. So I walked into this distributor, and it was in an open case in the plastic wrappers, and it was a six-pack of Pounders. So I had, I had to ask for directions on how to find it. The guy directed me there. The guy who finally showed it to me was on the phone, and I was like, I was like, how much is this? Because I it was like weird. It was like a six pack out in the open on the floor, and he was like, the guy was like, it's dirt cheap. Because he knows you a little. He knows me yeah. a little. Because I guess dirt cheap. It's he's way like cheaper a, than anything. He's like else you're dirt cheap. So I came over tonight and I asked Tom. I was like, so I I relayed this to Tom and in the mix, and I was like, here's a six pack of pounders. If someone, if you were in this scenario and someone said to you, what is dirt cheap? Because I, I had to feel, I, had to, I, had to, I needed a sounding board because I wasn't sure of my reaction. So I said, Tom, what's dirt cheap based upon the scenario I just laid out to you? We are both familiar with the price of the beer. So we, we knew the price of the beer. And I am completely right. clueless. Um, I he's no never idea. bought it before. So nope. I said... When he says dirt cheap for a six pack of pounders, if he said dirt cheap for his normal price, it's probably going to come in at about six dollars. Normally, it would be somewhere around eight or so. Between six and eight dollars is the normal price for a six pack of pounders of this beer. In my head, I assumed dirt cheap was ten to fifteen dollars. That was my assumption of what Fine dirt assumption. cheap was. Lo and behold, we were both wrong. Twenty. Two dollars a six pack. Twenty two. Right. So immediately, I'm. I said without a doubt they accidentally charged the case price per six pack. Twenty two bucks a case is what you would pay for this beer. So they. It was. It was an honest mistake. They messed up on the charge. It should have been twenty two. Yeah, we're hoping for a happy ending. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Yeah. But we're not going to mention any names. Right away, I said, contact them, because that is an honest mistake. They just they rang up the wrong thing. Not they calling anybody out. We just wanted yeah. to share a beer shopping experience with yep. you. They just didn't ring because up. Because on one end... Pack. They rang up like a 12-pack, or they rang up... This like... was a glorious bargain. A glorious bargain. And the place the place is a, is a good place. 
They're not. I was just an honest mistake. Right. A hundred percent belief. I have no doubt that that was just an honest mistake. It happens. You called them on it. I was not con- at the time. I was confused. Yeah, you were confused. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if they uh, answer up afterwards. I think they will. All right. So we're humming along at 40 minutes, Tom. We have made a concerted effort not to keep you guys here for an entire hour tonight because we value you more than you value you, right? We have a timer on our screen now. Mm-hmm. So guess what time it is? It's time for... Oh, I almost forgot. Don't yes. forget. Yes. All right. So since we don't have uh, in mix ear officially licensed uh, headphones on... Yeah, correct. I think he's playing three music right now. So you want to be a Cicero! All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I love it, so much. it is once again. I he, I just love. I love how I come up with these off the cuff things and stream of consciousness. I deliver it to him. It goes through this weird twisted filter and it comes out like what you just heard. Like the genesis of what you just heard was me saying to to in the mix a couple weeks ago, "Hey man, did you ever hear this like game show theme song from back in the 70s? I think it was the dating game and it kind of went like Da, 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 da. And in the mix, it was like, oh, yeah. And then we went back and forth, and we were trying to figure out what game show. And then this guy is like, oh, I got a guy. I'm going to give this to a guy, and it's going to sound awesome. <laughs> don't don't get it, don't look it up. I, we can make something. And and what he made was what you just heard. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we had to ask for... Get, don't get... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Nate. Maybe, was it like, did it take like eight takes to finally get it crappy enough? Like somewhere about eight takes, and I can't, we just have to keep saying, like, "Could you make it worse? Yeah, way too. Good. Could you do worse, please? Could you make it sound even worse?" And he just kept coming back. Like, okay, too good. <laughs> That's too good. So thank you, Mikey. It's it's wonderful. We just we're tickled with it. We love it. <laughs> it's exactly what we asked for. Uh, and, and that's just like. Um, <laughs> Once again, I came up with this idea, and I was like, hey, let's make a glass. Let's put this here. Let's put this here. And can we do this? And he took my idea of this, and it morphed into that. That. I think it's a pretty good, solid idea. I think it was glorious. Every time I drink out of that glass, I laugh. Every single time. Um, this is the winner of the night. I really, wow. like, I really like this beer. Really? really? Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, from from those last like two or three ounces, I really, I really enjoyed that. That's good beer. Four twenty. Very nice beer. Yeah. Uh, Four twenty for a thirty-two ounce crowler, Limerick beverage. Limerick beverage. You should sponsor us, even though you don't. Let's send everybody there, right? Have we ever even asked them? No. We should probably ask them. Before. Should probably ask them. The game! All right, here we you go. You already played the theme song. L- ladies and gentlemen, if you're not familiar with the game, Cicerone is a certification course that you can go through to be a beer expert. And there are different levels of um, testing and certification. These questions all come from the basic taster level of certifications. Here we go. So you want to be a Cicerone. Tom, in the three-tier system for alcohol, sales, an importer can sell to who? Mm. Retailers? Wholesalers? Breweries? Consumers? Wholesalers. Final answer? I'm, I'm, I'm torn between A and B. But I'm going to go with B, because I would say an importer is at such a higher level. So I'm, I'm going to go with B, because I think... Wholesalers is correct! Yes. Good job, buddy. Nice, thank you. Can I have the brown, please? Absolutely. You deserve it. Delicious. You deserve it. Get another splash of that. All right, question number two. Tom, if beer is pouring foamy at the tap, 
Which of these could not be the cause? There's a kink in the line. Oh, kinky. The beer's too cold. The keg is not under enough pressure. The beer lines are too clean. <laughs> which, All right, so. which one of those could not be the cause of um, excessive foaming? All right, so you, there's there's no such thing as beer lines being too clean. So unless I'm misunderstanding the question, would you like me to read it again? No, you don't need to read it again. So which one could not be the cause? Yep. Would not be the cause of the beer lines being too clean. I was going to go with C. C, as soon as you read C, I was in, but then beer lines are too clean. That is, I'm going with, with D because it sounds absurd. Two for two, my friend. Oh. Two for two. You're doing swimming with it. Yeah. Tom, which of these is not an aspect of what we refer to all the time, mouthfeel? Which one of these characteristics is not an aspect of mouthfeel? Okay. Thinness? Body, bitterness, carbonation. Which one of those is not an aspect of mouthfeel? I immediately assumed A because thinness is a word that the Cicerones I don't think would use. They would use some other snootier word. But then bitterness came up, so it's definitely not. Three for three, buddy. You're rolling right along. You're getting good at this. <laughs> What's Tom's nickname in high school? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like how... Mouthfeel? <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy how uh, Rags has co-opted my running joke. I don't have to do it anymore. If you could get Rags to leave the city and come to Lansdale... Is he my he spirit could, animal? He could take the train. No, he's such a great, fun guy. He'd Why would he not train. come on 522? take the train. Rags, come on. Right to Lansdale. Right Take there. the train. And walk. I'm, anyway. I'm counting on you. Question number four. Which beer style typically has, oh, you're going to like this, the highest ABV for the pregame, maybe? Pilsner for the win. Maybach. My, my is it going to be all lagers? Doppelbach. Oh. <laughs> A Munich Dunkel? Oh, dear. A Latvian hat beer. Oh, oh, they're throwing it at me. Oh, man. Oh, this is a toughie. Okay, so I don't know Latvian hat beer. I've never once heard of a Latvian hat beer. You know what beer. I want to do? I really want a Latvian hat beer now, because I also had no clue what the <laughs> hell that was. I feel like there's some guy in Latvia wearing an awesome hat making like, beer. Is it, like, filtered through I don't through, know. Through a hat? I have no idea. We're going to have to do some research on that. So D's out, because I've never heard of it. I think it's fake. Um... <laughs> Wow, this is a toughie. I'm this this is gonna honestly be kind of a guess, but I'm gonna go with Doppelbach. It could be the Dunkel. I'm gonna have to go with B Doppelbach. Although they're they're really good beers. Uh, they're, yeah, let's go with B Doppelbach. Yeah, I'm not sure about it, sir. What was it? Yes! Double ah! ball! <laughs> <laughs> what was your line of reasoning there? Why? Because you seem so unsure. Well, my Bach is on the lighter side. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with a my Bach. Not as far as lagers go. If you're talking you just know, a regular lager. Do you know what the translation of Doppel is? Double. Right. But then you've got the, um, the, the Dunkel. Which is a whole different animal. Right. So a, a Dunkel, I would say in... My personal opinion, Dunker, Dunkel is a little bit higher in flavor, like has a little bit more complexity to it. So I was worried that with the added complexity would also add ABV. We don't drink these beers enough, by the way, that are on this list because no. all those caramely, bready, delicious, delicious, delicious beers. All right, last question. It's super ice cold too, so good that way. When a beer is light struck, dun, 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 it will have an off flavor. Described as Skunky. buttery, nope. buttery. That's not ass at all. Skunky, papery, 
vinegary. I'm going to go with B. Because I said skunky before you. You did. Congratulations. Yeah. You went five for five tonight, buddy. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Good job. Right. I'm going to be a Cicerone. <laughs> That's good. So you want to be Ladies a and gentlemen, Cicerone. that brings episode 22, A Beer for All Reasons, to a conclusion. We want to thank you for coming out and spending this time with us. Every Thursday night, we appreciate it. Um... We've never really asked for something like I'm about to ask the audience. And here's what I'm going to ask the audience. I really want to see you guys on May 22nd. I want us to have a really fun party. So please, if you can swing it, come to Lansdowne hang out with us. I don't want to be embarrassed. No, we're not going to be embarrassed. It'll be fun. <laughs> no, no, I want them all to come. I don't want I don't want like 20 people to show up and be embarrassed. No, 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 it'll be fine. I just want... I miss I miss everybody. I want them to come so, hang with us. We know for a fact that Stove and Tap is doing something really big. We know it's uh, it'll be Round Guys doing it all out. Uh, special flights and menu items at Round Guys. Yeah, we, we're, we're working on that. We're negotiating on um, having the low expectation snack pack available. And what? Uh, well-crafted. Well-crafted is in. Uh, it's, it's just going to be a fantastic time. And we're going to do hourly live shots throughout the day. So every hour we're going to we're going to go live on Facebook and just let people say hi or it's just it's going to be so much fun. And right now a lot of you guys know each other in the comments as names but you've never so, met. Yeah, so what's going to be really cool is A you can meet, B if you can't make it you can always tap in cuz we're going to do a couple live broadcasts and we'll bring some people on camera and just hang out and have a good time. Yeah. Music, food, sunshine, beers, come on. And when you get sick of us, just go to the next place. The yeah, whole city's yeah, going to be. You can just ignore us. It's going to be awesome. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you for it, and it it is so much fun. We love it, so thank you. No and room I, tonight. I hope you have fun, too. We're going to just sign off and say goodbye. Be's tired. I am, but thanks, guys. Always good spending time with you. Good night. Thank Take you. Take care, everybody. Cheers.